went on. Talk to me. Good at breaking things down like you just did. You understand consequences and repercussions very well. Okay. So my question to you is, hmm. why are you such a habitual line stepper? Why do you cross that line so often when you know what the repercussions and consequences are going to be? And it's, they're not going to be favorable to you. For example, right. I saw where you and uh, Shug got arrested, right? You and Shug got arrested? Is that true? Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Okay. Like, <laughs> Allegedly. And what, what were we doing? Allegedly, it had something to do with like some type of photography, uh, camera, or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm just, uh, I'm just saying this is what I read. I well, I'll like, tell you the story, yeah, and you tell, tell me, the then does that change how you frame this? Okay. So, um, we have a meeting with a hologram company, which is going to go into a licensing deal on some holograms. This is in Beverly Hills. So now there's a rodeo, and behind that is an alleyway where you park your vehicles. Mm -hmm. That's where we are. Uh, Suge has brought his son with him, who's five years old. And before we go into this meeting, Suge's son runs behind the dumpster and urinates. And a lady films his penis out, peeing behind the dumpster. Mm -hmm. And then says, oh, I thought that was Cat's kid. So yeah, that's what happened. See, see. Oh, they violated. Wow. So, yeah, that would definitely get any parent upset to know that some photographer video recorded or took pictures of their son peeing. Okay. See, man, see, this is so understand, we were facing yeah. 20 years, yeah. Suge and I. 20 years for that. And if it wasn't for the fact that this is Beverly Hills and it's all on camera, they had no problem sending us up the river when we couldn't have possibly done what was being said. That, that lady said that she got jumped on by me. So you see what you just did? You just clarified a huge, like, uh, misconception about, you know, the events of that, that event or whatever. Yeah, but remember, it went to court. Yeah. Like, this isn't just my word. This, yeah. They had to play the video in court, which showed that her altercation wasn't with a man at all. But the trip part about it is that when people print it, when the media, yeah. mainstream media put it out there, they mm -hmm. don't add that piece. They no, nor, nor do they make a retraction. Right. Nor do they say, hey, that thing we told you about that right. guy, turns out it was nothing. Und understand, I got 15. I never knew about this. To be honest with you, I, I, never, I never even heard about this. This is the first time I ever heard about it. Cases that were dismissed. That, that should be talked about. Why, why, would, why would 15 cases be dismissed? Because you were so sure you had what you were looking at. Because every city I go to, I'm the nigga with the best car. It's probably smoke coming out that car. It's probably girls gathering around that car. I, I look like the plug. I get it. <laughs> and you probably already hurt me by the time you find out who I actually am. Right. See, because of that clarity you just provided, yes. it's the reason why I want to know. I think the world want to know what happened between you and Alisa D. I know you said the you world couldn't about possibly want to know that. Know, He's man. not famous enough for the world to want to know that. Uh, at least because my side of the world doesn't want to know that. See, well, my side of the world here's, here's the thing. What happened, man? A lot of times what liars do first is they set up a narrative and a scenario. Like Michael Blackson just got on national TV and told people, yeah, I got to beef with Cat Williams and Cat is mad at me about this and because I said this and I didn't even mean it like that. And the whole time, he's never talked to me. That's how he feels. He's heard I'm angry. I've not had a conversation with him. It's the same with your Ali Sadiq. If it wasn't for the information that I know in my intel, I would be a fan of his like everybody else. Who wouldn't be a fan of a young black storyteller that's done time and loves his family and is a hometown guy? Like, who, who, why would he ever have any enemies in comedy? It's ludicrous. But if you pick the actual king, then make sure that your story is correct. And unfortunately, his story is not correct. No matter what he says, he never met me. He made it disrespectful that a security guard that was six foot seven reached over him to pay him. Not, uh, not mentioning the fact that he got paid for not doing anything. Well, let's start, let's start at the beginning of the Reliant thing. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to I'm going to start, ahead. and then you can do what you want to do. Fair enough. But I think for, for the sake of the audience, no one will just Tell have who Ali idea Sadiq what we're talking about. ID Sadiq. Yeah, I don't even know who he is. I, I really don't even know who he is. This dude that he's talking about, I really don't know who he is. He is a comedian from Houston. That's based, based in Houston. A very uh, fine comedian. Very oh, that nigga. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm from... Oh, I know I know who he's talking about. I didn't know that him and Cat Williams had a little beef. Oh, now I see why Willie D is talking about him. Oh, because... You no, know, Willie D is from Houston. Oh, I'm like... Oh, okay, I get it. I get it. Very fine comedian. Yeah. Now, Ali, Ali said that he went to a Reliant uh, uh, Arena to, and he was on the same show as you. He showed up, and they just, uh, the uh, security stopped him from entering the building. And, he, and, they said, and then somebody told him, Cat didn't want you to come in. And then at some point, somebody else came and gave him a check. That's the, another security person who reached over to somebody's shoulder and gave him a check. He said that the, the people that were the working security locked arms to prevent him from walking inside of the building. And he thought that, you know, you had a problem with him. And he said he didn't know why you had a problem with him. And to this day, he don't know why you have a problem with him. That's what he, that was the, the you know. It'd be nice if that was the story. So now if that's the story, then let me see if I got this correct. A guy I've never met was supposed to be doing a show with me. And I got so angry, even though I hadn't met him that I had security keep him out of the building. See, that's the problem with lies. They're, they're faulty from their inception, sir. I'm the person in the story that doesn't have a grudge to feel. I don't care why I didn't like Cat Williams. I would get to the bottom of it. This is not one of those stories. First of all, 
the actual truth of this matter is, every city that I go to, I already have the comedians who are opening up for me. Not just this tour, but for the 17, 100 city tours previous to this. I never go to the city and go, hey, do you guys have some comics here? I'd like to add them to my show. I just don't do it. I travel with the comedians um, that are coming to your city. We're one unit and one team when we come. That is to let you understand that no comic was fin to come join us that evening because there isn't space for it. I still have to do an hour at the end of this. There's a limited amount of time. So we could just start there. Second of all, I don't care where you're from, what the venue is, how cool you are with the people that work there. Cat Williams show means Cat Williams show. That means don't nothing move but the money. There ain't no loud talking and voice raising and, well, I, how dare you, <laughs> how dare you? How, let me look on the advertisements and see, do I see your name or face, sir, whoever you may be? Where would you even get the entitlement to be having this question? This is like me insisting that the Lakers put me on as a starter. <laughs> and I won't take no for an answer. It's ridiculous. You don't even play in our league. And that's before I knew who you were. Now that I know who you are, I'm just ashamed because you took something personal that couldn't have been personal. I didn't meet you. That's how it would have gone if I wasn't there because the truth is I wasn't there. All of this happened before I got there. What happened with the check? When the security guy- um, When I heard, when I asked what the person had said, I said, well, I don't understand. I don't understand why he's so angry. What did he say to you? He said, I'm supposed to be on this show. I said, well, well, maybe he was expecting to get some sort of a payment. And, and now he thinks he doesn't get to get paid because we already have a tour. I, I wouldn't want that pay him for performing. So he got the check of the performer. This is what he's angry about. Imagine the audacity. Mm. Remember, your story is that I'm kicking you the fuck out. Get out and lock arms and don't let him in. And paying you, make it make sense, King. So, Either you're smaller than I think or I'm bigger. Either one. Like you can't keep positioning the narrative because that's all this is. This is so that in a conversation in America, there'll be something where he and I are evenly linked and only people in his hometown are floating that narrative. You, I'm really him. You, you, don't, you don't believe that there's under any circumstances that you, know, you and Ali can come to a resolution, just be cool? You know, You've like, just talked to me. You know yeah. I don't have a bone in this? Yeah. I don't have a bone in this. So if I got him on the phone, y'all, you talk to him? <sighs> I would have gave him the celebrity boxing match he asked for if I thought he was a celebrity. Oh, come on. <laughs> Willie, man, this interview is kind of crazy. This 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 interview is kind of crazy, Willie D. I, I I rock with you, man. But this, I don't know. This interview is really interesting. <sighs> interesting. Oh man, you know, Elliot Celebrity. Come on, sir. I'm not talking. I, I didn't mean that disparagingly. Yeah. I meant that in ticket sales, my nigga. Ticket sales. That's what I meant. I mean, I'm doing 7,000 in your hometown while you go do 300. I'm not being disrespectful. I'm talking statistics. I'm talking about the biggest and baddest thing going. And you, a person trying to get in, why would you be mad? It's, it's ridiculous. Facts are facts. I, I, I see exactly what Kate Williams is saying. Facts are facts. Numbers are numbers. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. I'm offended. <laughs> I'm offended. Why? Because even if it's celebrity boxing, I need you to sell tickets too. <laughs> I need you to sell these pay-per-view numbers, man. I know I'm bringing it. It's a whole, it's more people that want to see me get laid out by you. And the fact that an upstanding and righteous gentleman like yourself is in that position with the only thing trying to be righteous in our lane is just more machinations of the devil. Hmm. You should have a much better backstory well, you know when you pick me as an opponent. You know what, man? I'm, I'm glad you at least, you know, you know, addressed it, you know, because, uh... Ooh. This interview isn't going the way that I expected. Um, wow. This is uh, uh, Willie D, man. That look right there kind of says a lot. Y'all leave a comment down below, man. Oh, this is. Yeah, I think I'm going to stop right here and then I'm going to make another video about this. Like, I'm watching this for the first time, so I'm giving my raw reaction right here. Ooh, interesting. It's your boy, Dan B, signing out.